Thanks, David. Thanks uh, to all of you for joining us at the Sold Out Green Space tonight. And uh, welcome to those of you who are watching us via Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, however you're watching. Um, how many of you have been to one of our Green Space events before? Okay, a few. How many of you have ever been to a New York Guitar Festival event before? A few more. All right. Uh, for those of you who've been to neither, this is how it works. We've got uh, a group of musicians who are going to come out here and play. Tonight, they're each going to do at least one Memphis mini tune and some of their own music, and we'll have a chance to speak with them uh, briefly as well. Tomorrow night, we are doing an even bigger event. Uh, it's a free event at the Waterfront Plaza of Brookfield Place, downtown, uh, across the street from the World Trade Center near the Winter Garden Atrium, where we've done our New Sounds live concerts every fall for almost 20 years. And uh, it'll just be Memphis mini songs, like 12, 13, 14 people in a row just pounding out the Memphis mini songs, which is great, because she is a criminally underrated figure in American musical history, a real linchpin between the evolution of acoustic Delta blues and electric Chicago blues. Most people are familiar with Memphis Mini because of one song covered by a band called Led Zeppelin, and that is When the Levee Breaks. And I don't think it'll be too much of a spoiler to say that you're probably going to hear that song tonight. <laughs> Just not right away. Uh, we're going to begin with Kaya Cater. She's a really gifted songwriter, singer, banjo player. We'll let her in the guitar festival. Um, and she's going to do a couple of songs from her most recent album, Grenades, as well as a Memphis mini tune. Please welcome Kaya Cater to the green space. I'm so glad to be the first official act of the guitar festival. <laughs> Banjo is the new guitar. Kids in blue 
fill it up again On meridian ground The half-breeds and the kids in blue Drain the water from the roof That is Kaya Cater, and uh, one of her original songs, that's Meridian Ground, which exactly. was one of my favorites from the, from the last record, from Grenades. Thank you. Uh, and with you is Andrew Ryan? Yes, that's oh. correct. On the one and only. On Two first base. names. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an interesting song, you know, it, we, we've talked a little bit about this when you were last upstairs in our regular studio. Uh, you can find Kaya's sound check session with us doing that song and a couple of others uh, at newsounds.org. But the term half-breed recurs in the song. And, you know, for you as a Caribbean-Canadian uh, singer, songwriter, banjo player... Insert endless hyphens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, your career has taken so many twists and turns already into Appalachian music. And at what point... Uh, did you discover Memphis Mini? Was it when you got the call to do this, or had you, were you already familiar with her? It was when I got the call to do this, John. Okay. So thank you for introducing <laughs> me to Memphis Mini. Um, no, but I, I was actually kind of... Uh, I, I find her to be an extremely Im important um, voice and presence in the lineage of blues music, and I was surprised that I hadn't heard of her, but but I think it's it's no accident, you know. I think uh, we're we're familiarized with with a lot of the men, with Big Bill Brunzi, with Howlin' Wolf, um, with Muddy Waters, um, Blood Belly, even. But uh, I think some of the women often are overlooked, and especially uh, women of color. And so uh, I was really excited when I got this call because I realized that though I've done many many tributes, I've never done a tribute to a black woman which is, I think that's a special thing. And so I, I dug into her collection, and it's so incredible and prolific. Well, and, you know, in, especially in the 30s and early 40s, you know, when she wrote, like, her best stuff, when the levee break, she wrote with her then-husband in, like, 29. Right. You chose Frisco City? Frisco Town. Frisco Town. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what was it about that song that kind of spoke to you? I, I find that she, that Memphis Minnie, uh, who previously went by the name Kid Douglas, which I, I thought that was a, a, great na a great name. That was her first moniker when she first started playing out. Um, but I, I should say Memphis Minnie was not her choice. No, that, that was given to her, That was her, given right? to her yeah. by her record company, right. uh, which is how it was done back then, especially if you were a woman and a woman of color and you had no say in the matter. Right. Isn't that crazy? Someone saying, yeah. like, this is who you are. Right. Um, Anyway, I, I find that she has an extreme command over her sexuality in in her music, and I and I always f found that to be, for me personally, a hard topic to broach, you know, and I and I just appreciate that she's so playful um, in in a lot of her songs. Not to say that her songs aren't serious, mm -hmm. uh, but Frisco Town was particularly appealing to me because she's kind of stringing this guy along. They're like on this train together, headed to San Francisco. And she's like, sure, I'll hang out with you for a while. But then they pull into the station, and she's like, no, this is done. I'm <laughs> off to figure out my destiny. And uh, yeah, and so I, I just really identified with that. All right. <laughs> OK. I could ask a follow-up question, but your parents might be watching, so I'll skip it. Um, but you're going you're gonna to first do another of your, your own songs, right? Yeah. Canyonland? Yeah, that's correct. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Kaya Cater. Freeway trailing 
horses flash golden manes You puff the vapor and blow it off the window pane My heavy braids fall like wolves pulling softly at you Urging you to look in my direction Dark hair, dusk flaunts her coral silk at sunset You are fussing with the tape deck I am teetering, pacing at the edge of my Mining for a breach in your reflection In the canyon land of rock Where the twitching jerkle hides And the woman takes her time Takes her time In the canyon land of stone You can size me up and run There was a time when all I knew was all I wanted When every crop was set ablaze Like the bird I have turned and pulled you into me Whistling all the themes to your redemption Steady baby, steady on the hazard lights The lizard crosses on the road My broken oath is hanging from the dashboard face You are waiting to so much if you're liking what you're hearing of this banjo guitar hybrid um, I will be playing at Flushing Town Hall in Queens June 7th which I believe is a Friday This is Frisco Train. That Frisco Train runs a mile a minute. That 
Frisco train runs a mile a minute. Well, that old coach, I'm gonna sit right in. I'm on my way to Frisco town. Constrictor in a lipstick, boy constrictor in a lipstick. I don't mind being with you, but my mom is sick. I'm on my way to Frisco Town. Look at here, look at here, what do you want me to do? Look at here, look at here, what do you want me to do? Give you my jelly and die for you. I'm on my way. Got something to tell you, gonna break your heart. Been together so long, we gotta break apart. I'm on my way to Frisco Town. I'm on my way to Frisco Town. I'm on my way. Kaya Kager and Andrew Ryan. Thanks, Kaya. Great to see you. Kaya will be uh, joining us again tomorrow night at uh, the Waterfront Plaza at Brookfield Place. We'll be starting at 6.30 with a DJ set by DJ Spooky and some special guests. And then our series of live performances of songs by Memphis Mini. Again, that's a free event tomorrow evening, but really happy that you're here with us in the green space tonight. Our next guest is actually a guitarist. Um, Rafik Badia first joined us uh, upstairs uh, on the, uh, the Soundcheck podcast series some years ago as a solo guitar player. He has since become a member of the band Sun Lux, but has continued to do his own music and is here tonight to perform on the unlikely combination of his electric guitar, and our acoustic piano with Chris Padishall. So please welcome them to the stage here at the Green Space. Thank you. So uh, Rafik, um, what is it that you and Chris have put together for us this evening? It's not like discrete songs, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it's something that will snake its way through about 10 minutes and um, culminate in a piece of Memphis Minnie's music called You Ain't Done Nothing to Me, um, which is... It's this very persistent, tough, um, kind of like repetitive melody that, you know, like the lyrics are things like, you'll drive me from your door, or you can drive me from your door, you can take every penny I've got, you can cock your pistol in my face, but you ain't done nothing to me. Mm -hmm. And it's just this very, it haunts you, you know, and it's, it's like, I, I feel like our version of it is like trying to capture the haunting of it. Okay. Uh, instrumental, right? Yes. Um, so how do you, I mean, you, you said this, this kind of musical journey will culminate in that. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you kind of take her kind of harmonic language as a starting point? Do we hear echoes or sort of pre-echoes of that building up to it? Well, what we're going to play in the first portion is sort of like 
it's somewhat harmonically related, but it's actually a discrete piece that's loosely drawing on a body of work that Chris and I have been working on um, for a little while that we actually started to compose um, for a commission that we got from Trinity Church that was an engulfed cathedrals project. Uh -huh. And it was sort of about environmental awareness. And so it's like this slow shifting kind of tectonic music. Mm -hmm. And um, we're taking a similar approach with the Memphis music, M Memphis mini music. That's very alliterative. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're trying to kind of find a way to her piece, um, and it's not entirely deliberate, or I, I should say it's not entirely like set in stone how we're gonna get there. Right, um, right. But we're looking forward to it. So it, it, so it is actually a musical journey, and you'll find your way. That's right, um, right. that's right. But, you know, there's, um, there's something like that going on in a lot of, like I feel like a lot of the examples of her music that I've listened to since this whole project came about has had this sort of, um, you know, on its surface it kind of has this like stasis in it and this sort of like um, tunefulness to yeah. it, but inside of that like there are all these unexpected kind of moments where I notice things like I'm like, I wonder if the band knew that she was going to do that at the moment or like, you know, like it's just very, it's very fluid and it has, it's all like the magnet that kind of draws it all together is her voice and her guitar playing, which I was just reading Langston Hughes described as sounding like electric welders and are like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it's just like, and weirdly like that's like, as somebody who doesn't really identify with making a guitar sound like a guitar, like having the guitar sound yeah. like electric welders is like kind of my thing, I think. <laughs> so, All right, well, yeah. weld away. Rafik Bhatia with Chris Padishal.
Rafik Bhatia, Chris Patashal at the piano, and the ghost of Memphis Mini. <laughs> nice job. Well, that was super creepy. Good night, kids. Sleep, tr pleasant dreams. Um, <laughs> can't wait to see what they do for us tomorrow um, at our event at uh, Brookfield Plaza. Um, we're in the green space tonight, uh, celebrating the music of Memphis Mini and celebrating 20 years of our collaboration between WNYC's New Sounds and the New York Guitar Festival. And our next guest is actually someone who has not been in our studios upstairs before, although uh, you've heard her performing, if you listen to, to New Sounds, as part of the quartet called, uh, the, the album's called Songs of Our Native Daughters. Please welcome one of the native daughters, Amethyst Kia. So here's Amethyst with a guitar, but her deep dark secret is she also plays the banjo. <laughs> right, yeah, I try not to let it out too much. <laughs> Just kidding. Although one of the interesting things about that uh, Native Daughters project is it's four women of color who are all banjo players, among yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah, all the uh, yeah all the songs the the banjo was the center because um, usually when you're dealing with like with Afrocentro music or Afrocentric themes. Um, the banjo usually is not is not usually thought of just because of you know historically, you know how the between the the division of the recording industry um, separating hillbilly from hillbilly records and race records, um, you 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 for a, there would be a, come a time when you wouldn't really find a too many black people playing banjos because they couldn't really make any money doing it because yeah. you know because of how things got skewed. Um, or if they were to make money at it, it would be doing blackface. So, right, <laughs> like right. it's so there wasn't really a whole lot of incentive to keep it going at that point in time. But um, so to kind of reclaim that instrument as um, obviously it's an American instrument, of course, but um, to reclaim those roots, um, I think is it's really important that that's remembered because um, just because of the issue of erasing certain people from certain aspects of history and yeah, yeah. and then when I'm holding a banjo the idea that you know it's you know I'm seen as you know acting white or you know putting these different kind of categories on me when it's like do you read history like yeah this is actually like <laughs> you know like the banjo is not it's not really shouldn't really be seen as novel but it is you know but you know we're getting the word out, so yeah, yeah. that's the whole idea. But. I mean, the instrument came from someplace, and it wasn't here. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, but the idea of being erased from history is an interesting thing when we're talking about Memphis Mini. Right, exactly. Um, I know what you mentioned earlier, and, um, you know, this was a, a woman that, I guess, during her time wasn't nearly as recognized as she should have been. Mm -hmm. um, and you think of a person, you think of a woman during that time, especially a black woman, her options are to be a domestic worker or to, or to be uh, some, some form of laborer um, or turn to prostitution or turn to other things, which I think at some point I think she actually did have to, to she did have to, to prostitute to make ends meet. But the fact that she just decided, well, I'm just going to play music, I'm just going to play my guitar um, during such a difficult time, uh, to me, is just incredibly inspiring. Um, you know, I had the luxury of my parents bought me a guitar when I was 13, and then I just stayed in my room and played guitar. Like I, you know what I mean? Like I had, you know, I had, you know, you know, I had this, I had this extra kind of little layer of, of, of privilege there um, that I'm, when I read about people like that and um, read about her story and what she had to go through and still make amazing music despite all of the things she had to face. Um, it's just really, I feel very grateful. I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of, 
of uh, of some amazing people, and she's definitely one of them. So. Yeah, and and someone who's you know, I mean, the reason we're doing two events is to you know bring out the fact that this really was a pivotal figure in the development of. I mean, there's no rock and roll without the electric blues, and they, you know, she's right, exactly. she's like right there at the birth. Yeah. Um, now the the song of hers that you're going to play, "Kissing in the Dark," is this. Early acoustic, later electric. What, what 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 drove you to this particular song? Well, you know, when I was looking through the catalog, I this song really this song really kind of just resonated with me. I thought the the lyrics, um, the lyrical content was was pretty interesting because um, it kind of seemed like she was also kind of toeing the lines of like gender and sexuality within that song too. I mean, I don't know what exactly you know all the details as far as that goes in her personal life. Um, but uh, I just thought she that she was married she, several times. Yeah, yeah, there's that. But as far as like the other aspect, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know if there's anything outside uh -huh. of the married thing. <laughs> but um, but I mean, I just in that song in particular, like she tends to, she seems to kind of toe the line with that um, and this idea of you know being, you know, being a woman once again, doing as she doing as she wants to do mm -hmm. um, and not feeling confined to domesticity and that kind of thing. So I just thought that was an interesting, um, I just thought it was an interesting song in that way. And then when I was messing around with it, I kind of came across this sort of really interesting kind of halftime beat that I ended up coming up with for mm -hmm. it that, um, that felt really, I don't know, felt really, felt really cool, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> So interesting. So it was actually the lyrical content rather than you as a guitarist admiring the virtuosity of the picking that drove you to this well, song. Well, what's interesting with me is I definitely enjoyed, I mean, her guitar playing is phenomenal. It's amazing. Um, and I think where, where I'm at now um, and the way that I have played guitar, like I've kind of developed my own style. So when I listen to her playing, I'm like, well, this is great. And how can what can I do to honor what she's doing, but also do it in my own way? Right, right. Um, finger picking is sort of it's like the crux of how I play guitar most of the time. So uh, her finger picking style is incredible, and I had to figure out a way where can I mesh my style with hers, as opposed to trying to play like her. How can I mm -hmm. honor that with the with how I play? So yeah. Okay. Now you're also going to do a couple of your own songs. What do you want to do first? Well, first I'm going to do a song called Wildebeest, and then after that I'll do a uh, little bit of a country, 6-8 little country song that I wrote called The Worst. All so. right. Ladies and gentlemen, Amethyst Kia. <laughs> Baby Ruby Little, this what it said. If you come around here again, I'm gonna shoot you to your dead. Well, it ain't no mystery. Put red wine on your new girl's white dress. You was my darling with dark eyes, but now. Use the devil that wants me dead. My baby's hands was covered in letters. Said loving hand. When them hands would touch me, Lord, my skin would burn away. Hey, and that bitch scream, hey, moan in the best possible way. I was a banshee in the night 
But now I'm the one that got her